and welcome to Enter the Glory Zone with me, Dr. Edith Davis on 94.1 FM Wave 94. Today we're having a live, live talk. And I would like to share with you the latest revelations that Daddy God, Yuhei Vahe, Lord God, Holy Spirit, and Yahshua Mashiach, Christ Jesus, has been downloading to me. Many of us know that we're in some very difficult times. And I want everyone to listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. God has given me insight, and I know it's not just for myself. I'm going to talk about some things in the natural realm, which which is important, but more, more important is what I'm going to talk about in the spiritual realm. But I want to go ahead and start off with the natural realm. Basically, as you know, we have the war in the Ukraine. A lot of people don't quite understand the importance of this war. On a spiritual level, it is humongous. I think that we're being set up for the last of the last of the last days. I believe that we're almost, almost ready for the rapture, which means all those who have accepted Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior will be raptured up into heaven prior to the seven years of tribulation. So I believe that we are definitely on the verge of this. Now, let's talk about it from the physical realm first. A lot of people don't understand, but between Russia and the Ukraine, one third of all the grain and all the wheat, all grain, wheat and corn and things like that are produced from this region. There are other countries such as Africa and Europe and many other smaller countries that are highly dependent on this wheat and corn harvest. Therefore, we're going to have a shortage. Therefore, prices for wheat and grain product is going up. Matter of fact, you already see it. One of the reasons why the alcohol, gasoline is going up is because of ethanol, which is produced from, guess what? Corn. So we're going to have a very interesting time in our finances. Now, the U.S., of course, we have weed and corn and these things, but our prices will go up as well because countries all over the world will be bidding for our weed and corn to feed their populations. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. Now, those of us who understand it, have all, some of them have already capitalized on this and have bought futures, right? Future pricing. So basically, if you bought the wheat and corn some time ago, you are making a huge profit or you're going to make a huge profit because the price of the wheat and corn is going to go up. Of course, it hurts on the other side as well. The other interesting thing is that we're talking about These days is inflation and inflation means basically when the prices of things are going up. Of course, we also have the wealth gap where we have the one percenters who basically has the majority of wealth in in the world and the rest of the world that doesn't have it. So we're going to see a lot of unrest and upheaval. You're going to see actually some governments uh, overthrown. This is all due to what? Economics, people want what the other country has. One of the things that people don't understand that's going on in the natural realm is water. Water, believe it or not, is a scarce commodity. Drinking water, that is. Yes, three-fourths of our planet is covered in water, but it is salt water. It is not drinkable water. And less than 1% of the water in planet Earth is drinkable water. Now, in the case of the United States of America, we're about to, we're already in water, water, world, water wars, but you will start seeing more water, water, um, wars. I mean, it's going to get intense. The headwaters of the Colorado is diminishing. Therefore, it impacts all the way down to the Rio Grande. We also have 
extreme weather conditions that are happening. Um, we're having, of course, fires, forest fires, hurricane, tornadoes. The interesting thing is areas that normally don't have tornadoes are not having tornadoes. So it's a lot of interesting things that are happening in the world, in the natural. Now, let's talk about what my main thing is all about, the supernatural. God is preparing his remnant. God is preparing his people for this time. And we are sort of like little Clark Kent's. We are superhuman. We have supernatural giftings, supernatural giftings to multiply food, to multiply water. Yes. To multiply money. Oh, yes. That's why I was trying to go to a cashless society. Right. Because the supernatural, we've had ministers such as, um, let's see, one of my favorite, Marilyn Hickey and others that have had to multiply food and water and money in cases of crisis. How do you think that this happened? God is not going to leave us out there. His kids, his children, he will protect and he will provide. So we are being trained up to operate and to operate in the supernatural. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, how do you get trained up? Well, first of all, you have to be saved. Now, we got people that operate in the supernatural who are not saved and they're, they're they are normally witches and warlocks and they're under Satan. But unfortunately for them, his, when you get anything from Satan, all it ends up in the end is death and destruction. Whereas in the case when you operate under the word of God and you obey God's word, then you have the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Then you have life instead of death. And you are equipped to not only help you and your family, but to help others, right? Baby Christians who don't understand these things. So you say, well, how am I tapped to go into the supernatural? Well, first of all, we're designated to obey God's word. If you if you obey God's word, if you believe, like myself, if you believe that Christ Jesus is the son of God, that he died, he was buried, he was born of the Virgin Mary, he died, he was buried, he was raised, he was raised from the dead, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. You qualify, you are now what saved. But you have to be more than just saved. You have to become a disciple. And this is where we have a problem in the body of Christ. The problem in the body of Christ is we've got a bunch of baby Christians we got a bunch of immature Christians and very few mature Christians, mature fathers, mature mothers in the body of Christ. Mature meaning I pay my tithe and offerings in love because I love God. That I align my budget up. I align, I, I align my body, my soul, my spirit, everything. I'm a living sacrifice. Whatever God asks me to do, I will do. Now, obviously, you got to be very careful when you're in this stage because Satan, he has an ability to be an angel of light. So you have to discern. You have to know the word. You have to rightly divide the word and you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit or you'll end up just like Eve jacked and Adam jacked. Why? Because they were dis Well, Eve was deceived. Adam was not. OK, so what does this all really mean? We are being prepared, for example, as you know, that I have been going through a lot of things of pain in my body and my so pain in my soul as well. But why? I'm, and I told you in the broadcast the last time I spoke to you that God had showed me the doors that I had opened, which was sugar. And he has talked, spoke to me back in the 1990s, stop eating sweets, right? And I stopped eating sweets. I stopped drinking sodas. I didn't realize sugar isn't inflammatory, and that's very bad, um, for, especially when you get older, right? So 
God wastes nothing. So God has been walking me through this and I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I bought the blood of Jesus covers me and I just have to walk through this process because of course he could just with the flick of a finger it's done. I could be healed, but I'm going through the process because I've got to help others. That's the other reason why we are going through some of the things we're going through. How can you help people to get out of uh, financial debt or how save their marriage or uh, how can you help people um, walk in health and healing after they've opened the door to the enemy to ravish them if you haven't walked through those doors yourself right you know the you know where the booby traps are so as I prepare for how God is going to use me during this season, I was reflecting on back going to the basic tithe and offerings. And I am teaching a class at All Nations Church, formerly known Christian Heritage Church, which is in a little shopping center um, near Tallahassee Mall, but it's closer to, um, I guess it's Fun Station and Chuck E. Cheese in between those two things. And so basically, I teach a class at 9 a.m. on Sunday, and I'm in the chapel, so you can join me anytime. And the reason why God has me teaching this class is because I'm preparing the remnant for the supernatural and finances. We must walk in the supernatural and finances. And one of the first steps, of course, after you're saved, is you must be a tither. Game over. You are not going to be walking in the supernatural without tithing. That means the first of everything that you have that God gives you, the increase must be given to God through his church. And don't matter, you know, if you don't like that church, you ask God what church that you need to go to and because it needs to go to the storehouse of the church, 10% off the top. Then your offering. And one of the new things that I've added, I tried it a while back, but I reinstated it, is the the Jewish people are first, Jews first. Jesus came first to save the Jews. Then he, he added the Gentiles, right? So my very first offering goes to Jewish Jewish ministry at Daystar, go through Daystar. Um, and then I have other uh, ministries that I give offerings to. But let me just tell you how awesome this is. Okay, so I am a nine-month employee. That means during the summer months, I have to find work from somewhere because my bills still come in. I still have to pay my rent which is almost come over two grand a month on top of all my other responsibilities of taking care. I have a a son who is um, trying to find himself. He was in school, but I think he's getting ready to go back. I think he sees that school is the answer. And um, so, and then I have a daughter that's at, um, who's in college in South, down in the South of Florida and so I also have responsibilities um, to students, and I have grants that I'm working on for the National Science Foundation using my microspiral methodology, which is something that God gave me. It's an innovative approach of learning where you microspiral the past, the present, and the future, the past, the present, and the future. And it helps students to retain what they have learned which is critical building blocks for going on to understand very complicated concepts in science and in technology and in mathematics. It's very complex in some of those arenas, and you need to understand it. And if you understand it well enough, you're able to extrapolate to new, new frontiers, new ideas. So that's one of my missions also, on planet Earth. So we are being, or I'm being trained up to walk through this, this event 
so that I can minister to others who don't, who are suffering like I am. And when I become totally healed and walk in the blessing, I'm already healed, but when I see the total manifestation of this in my body, then I've got to turn around and share this with others because God is all about his people and learning, learning from our mistakes. So that is one of the revelations that came to me just recently. The other interesting thing that I've been learning is that because we're so close to the second coming, we need to get our our house in order. And we need to look at, like my godfather says, we need to be good stewards, like Robert Morris says, of our bodies, of our souls, the mind, the will, and the emotion, and our spirits, right? And most of us, including myself, have not been good stewards of our body. You know, we got to exercise. We've got to eat right. We've got to love this body the way it should be loved because God is expecting us to increase this. What do you mean by increase it, Dr. David? Meaning when we return to him, our, our spirits return to the Father, or when we get our new bodies, because we will be getting new supernatural bodies soon. Our bodies will be redeemed, and we will get our supernatural bodies to go with our supernatural spirit. But until then, we need to be blessing this body because this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and this body is what we need to operate and do the things in the kingdom of God. And this became (laughs) extremely clear to me during this season of pain. So we need to understand that we have to get our house in order. We've got to um, read the word of God every day. We've got to handle our relationships with care and love. You know, I, I say all the time or pretty much every day, I'll, I'll ask Daddy God, you ain't by, hey, Lord God, Christ Jesus, Yahshua Mashiach, Lord God, Holy Spirit, Ruha Kadash. I ask them, I say, Daddy God, you ain't by, hey, Lord God, Christ Jesus, Lord God, Holy Spirit, what's on your heart today? How may I show my love, my gratitude, my appreciation of you this day? How may I bring glory, honor, and pleasure to you this day? Right? And guess what? God, the answer to that is how do you treat your fellow man? How do you treat your mother? How do you treat your brothers and sisters? How do you treat your brothers and sisters in the church? How do you treat people on your job? Are you walking in preemptive forgiveness? Forgive before it even happens. Why? That's one of the things my godfather Doug Avil taught me. Why is this important? Because then we don't waste time on being offended or, you know, having to walk in forgiveness. We get it out the way so we can be free and clear to be used by God. It's amazing how you can get distracted by the enemy. And it's a life and death situation for somebody else. And because you were were distracted, you were not in position to pray for that person's life and they died. Now, is that on you? Well, maybe not. But the bottom line is, I recognize a point in my life where I was distracted and a good friend of mine was in ICU. I was on my way to ICU, but I got distracted. And then when I got back on track, Shortly after that, he passed away. So the enemy will use anything and anybody to get you off course. That's why God needs mature Christian brothers and sisters. Because we are going to be focused on the kingdom of God. We are going to seek ye first the kingdom of God and 
his righteousness and all other things will then be added to us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And so this is what the Holy Spirit, this is what God the Father, this is what Lord God Christ Jesus is looking for. He's looking for mature believers. Because we've got a, we're going to have a bunch of baby Christians. We're going to have a bunch of teenage Christians and young adult Christians who are going to need fathers, spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. Well, Dr. Davis, how do I be make my, like I said, first step, getting saved, second step, tithe and offering. Why? Because every drop of money on this planet is covered with mammon, which is a spirit, which is one of the top generals of Satan. And there's a curse on money, right? So if you don't, the only way to break the back of mammon is to give your 10% to honor the true and only God, Daddy God, you Vahe, Lord God Christ Jesus, Lord God Holy Spirit, to honor them with your first fruit. When you do that, then you break the back of mammon, and guess what? The 90% is made whole and blessed, and God can move on in your behalf on your finances. So let's go back to what I was going to say earlier. So I have, I'm a tither. I give my offerings and I tell you it, it, every time I get tested every, every two weeks, I get tested. Right. So as you know, I'm a nine month employee, as I was saying earlier. And the three months I have to look for work. And I've been blessed. God gave me favor and I have been, I have won grants. And these grants, I get to do my research for the kingdom of God and I'm able to sustain my household over the summer. Correct? So, so I, like, as you know, have been going through some illnesses and we'll talk about that another day. But, because of that, I was behind on my grants because number, number one priority, of course, is my job, which is to teach science to students. So I have classes. So I, you know, I have to plan the syllabus. I have to plan the assignments. I have to give out the assignments. I have to grade the assignments. I have to nurture. I have to lecture. All of this get, I have, I had like 12 experiments. That they had to go through And then I had something called the great debate Where they um, Basically um, Have a topic and You work your way up to the top Where the top pro And the top con team go after it And then you have the winner Of the great debate Which was extremely exciting And a lot of fun And I did that because The, the bottom line is we're trying to produce people that can think critically. And so one of the things that I did in the great debate was I had them switch sides. Mm-hmm. In round one, they were pro, but when they went to round two, they became con. So they had to look at the problem through their adversary's eyes, which is extremely powerful. And then, of course, they went on to the final um, debate which was um, the top number one pro team um, going, went against the number one con team, and then you win the debate. So all of these things I have to do, and then I am the national ch chairperson for science education for the Association of Teacher Educators SIG um, committee, right? So being the national chairperson for science education that's a lot of responsibility, and that's now I'm on a national what platform. So it's been just unbelievable, and of course I was blessed to be able to um, be a reviewer for some National Science Foundation grants. So that that takes a lot of um, work, also, and so I was behind on my own personal. Um, grants 
And then I had this sickness come upon me, this illness, and it actually took me out of circulation because, you know, one of the ways to escape pain is to sleep. So um, I was sleep quite a bit trying to um, get through the pain and figure out what's going on and everything. And I'm going to a physical therapist and I'm going to um, also to uh, for, you know, the corporate, I guess I forgot what you call it. But there's the physical therapist and then there's the therapist that's kind of um, for, you know, corporations or on your job, right? Therapy. So I had that going on. So because I was behind, I did not get my paperwork in in time um, for to have my check, you know, not be stopped because I my my contract ended. And so I received my last paycheck today. And so now my my um, three months substance has to kick in. Well, you know, I was, wasn't panicking because I have watched my God take care of me every ever since I've been at this university, which is since 2009. And I've had so many one. I had one of my best friends, Linda Gale Roach. She paid my rent for three months. You know, I just have unbelievable things that God does for me through people. And so I have my mother, you know, she comes alongside of me and she helps me as well. And, um, you know, it's just amazing what what God has done. So as I was just, you know, I just wanted to spend some time with Jesus, you know, just have a, a day with Jesus and. So I, I texted and called out my friends and I said, I'm going to spend the day with Jesus, right? And I told my mother and my son and everybody, so they knew that I was kind of going to be um, a reclusive. And I just wanted to, I just wanted time with Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit. And so I did. I just, it was, I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it because, you know, I have people in the house, but God showed me a way and I was able to spend the day with Jesus. Well, the next day, <laughs> my computer's up and it's on the IRS, fun refund, you know. I had some issues where I still haven't received my all my refund from last year. And I, you know, and I know that IRS is working hard. Those people are just swamped and they're doing their best. So I'm not going to downgrade them at all. But the bottom line is, is that I hadn't received it and I had been counting on that money, you know, many times to take care of this bill or take care of that bill, but didn't come. So now I filed for my money for this year and thank God I had a refund coming, which I desperately needed. And so God um, was just awesome. And he had that day, which I don't know how it happened, but I opened up, looked at the refund and it said it was coming on the 18th, which was right on time. And I, you know, of course, you know, I tithe gross. That means I don't really have to tithe on my um, income tax, but I tithe on my income tax, be, even though I had already tithe on it, because I love God. And if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have no money at all. So I tithe on that money and I gave, I helped somebody else who was in trouble with the permission of the Holy Spirit. Because that's one of my weaknesses. One of my weaknesses is people, and I'm always trying to help people, and, I'm, and i got to make sure that I'm doing what God wants me to do. Because sometimes when you step in to help somebody, quote, unquote, <laughs> you're hurting them instead of helping them. So I have to be very careful about that. So this happened right after I spent the day with Jesus, I didn't know that God was going to have IRS release my refund. I had not a clue. I just wanted to spend time with him. So let's get back to 
how to walk in the supernatural. The number one way is this. You've got to obey God's word. You've got to have him as your source, as your only source. Dr. Davis, Dr. Davis, what do you mean by your only source? I mean as your only source. I look at people now as resources. My job is a resource. I do my best on my job for my for the students. Why? Because I'm representing Christ Jesus. I'm representing Daddy God Yuhevahe. I'm representing Lord God Holy Spirit. Therefore, I want to do my best, but I've got to be able to walk in the supernatural in my finances. Because they're going to be baby Christians. They're going to need help. It's not about the money for God. It's about the heart. As we get closer and closer to the second coming, God, the Holy Spirit, is going to be tapping on you to step up. And this was the revelation that I shared last time that I'm going to say it again. This is the revelation. Status quo doesn't work for God. He don't want you to he don't want you to operate in loss and he doesn't want you to maintain. He wants increase. And the perfect example are the three stewards. The one with five talents increased by five more talents, the one with two talents Increase more with two talents, two more talents, so four. But the one who buried the talent in the ground maintained, gave his master back what he gave him. He didn't lose anything, but he made nothing. And the master said, could you have not put the money in the bank so I at least would have gotten interest? A lot of Christians think that they're doing okay because they're maintaining. And God says no. And guess what he called that servant? Wicked. And he had them throw, he had the guards throw him into outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. I just want to make this perfectly clear. You can be a tither. You can have a chaste life. That means I'm celibate, so I'm not having sex with anybody. You can maintain your try to walk in integrity on your job and in your relationships. You can do all these things and still be told, depart from me. I never knew you. You want to know why? Because as my Godfather has said, we have blind spots and we need to listen to Godly men and women around us because they can see our blind spots. I had a blind spot on sweets. If you had told me that I had my idol was sugar, that my idol was sweets, that I was putting sweets, cookies and candies and ice cream over my God, I would have said, you're a liar. But that's exactly what I was doing. I was blinded. I didn't know. Now I don't do that anymore. Because now I glorify God's name and I esteem God's word above all things. So now when someone, the enemy comes to me about sweets, I say, my God told me to stop eating sweets. Okay, so I need you guys to reflect and think because you are getting being prepared to become mature people in the God, mature fathers and mothers in the body of Christ because we got a lot of baby Christians we've got a lot of teenage Christians we've got a lot of young adult Christians that are going to need our help and they're going to need us to be walking in the supernatural and you're not going to walk in the supernatural unless you're obedient to God's word now I want to close this broadcast with Romans 10 9 that is If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Thank you for once again joining me 
on Enter the Glory Zone on 94.1 FM Wave 94. Dr. Edith Davis. Presence. 